Let's talk about the evil practice of rehoming. Yes, I said evil. If you've never heard of rehoming, this is what happens when a family adopts a child and then they decide that that child no longer fits in with their family or that they're no longer able to parent that child. And so they go on Facebook groups, they go on websites, um, they even could go on Craigslist or things of that nature to basically try to give that child up to another family. The evil part of this rehoming process is that there are no no, there's no oversight to this because as a parent, they can just give up that child to whoever they choose. They can just sign paperwork and, um, you know, give up the rights legally and just hand over the child to a family that hasn't been vetted. We don't know that th that family's background and, and such and so forth. So today I want to show you guys this video from 60 Minutes Australia, which is an amazing documentary that if you've never really understood what rehoming was, well, today you're about to learn. who is looking for her forever family. She describes herself... It's a parade like no other. Abandoned children desperately selling themselves to win over a new family, a new start. She also likes drawing and doing arts and crafts. And in the audience, sizing them up to find a perfect match, are their potential parents. Okay, Michaela, you look so cute. Traveling to this so-called matching event today is Tom, a teacher with no children, who is interested in 14-year-old Frank, given up by his adopted family two years ago and now living in a care home. Today is important because I get a chance to kind of be a part of something, you know, a part of a family that I've been waiting to be a part of for a very long time now. If that doesn't make you make your blood boil, I don't know what will. These are children who have were maybe already adopted and those families decided that they no longer want those children. He has much to lose and only two hours to convince Tom he's worthy of adoption. I'm trying to show him the brightest aspects of me and to let him know what the darkest ones are. Frank has sold himself well. Tom agrees to give his new son a trial run and will collect him in 15 days time. Thank you, do the same. But six months later, Tom decides they're not compatible. And again, Frank can only hope and wait to find a family who wants him forever. So this is a child who is being tossed around as if he is a dog as if he's an animal or an object who you can just toss around from family to family. Oh, I don't like that, and so we're, we can't do this. Oh, I don't like that, so we can't do this. So we've already seen through the story for this young man that his family who had adopted him originally have already decided that they don't want to keep him. And now he's being paraded around and being shown around to other families to try to adopt him. It is distressing, tragic, and completely legal. Here in the US, it's a phenomenon known as rehoming, where along with matching events, troubled kids are advertised like goods on eBay and given to anyone who'll take them. Mostly they're adopted and often wear the scars of abuse and neglect. Most disturbingly, their parents have decided they no longer want them. So what we're seeing here, you guys, is literally the sale of children who have already been adopted. This is post-adoption. So supposedly society has already done their due diligence, they've already done their best for their children, they've already found a suitable family. By the time we get here, this child, these children should be in a home that's suitable for them. As foster parents, we are pretty vetted, right? You go through your home study process, you do your background checks, you take the classes, the child stays with you for however long. You can decide at any point as a foster parent that, you know what, I don't think this, this is a good fit for our family. We're, you know, calling a two-week notice or whatever. You can do that as a foster parent. You don't ever need to go through adoption as a foster parent, okay? So there are so many opportunities as a foster parent for you to see these things. Like, it doesn't take very long to see if a child is a good fit in your family, but to spend so much time with a child 
to to um, start bonding with them, for them to be in your home, to adopt them, and then to decide after adoption that you don't want to parent them parent them anymore, I think it's absolutely evil. It would be best for that child, in my view, to just let them go. If you're fostering them and you don't think that they're a good fit, let that child go so that they can hopefully find a family that will be able to adapt them and keep them. But it is cruel, cruel to keep a child in foster care, to foster them, to say, yes, I want to adopt them, knowing already, because you would have known already, that this child may not be a good fit for me because the child can't just pretend. I mean, if you've been fostering them for a year, a year and a half, two years, any length of time, you'll see everything about that child. They can't hide their you know, bad behaviors or whatever, they're, they're children. And so you would have seen all of these things. So for you to wait until adoption is over and then decide you don't want them is absolutely evil. It's cruel. It's an underground trade in children that could be happening in any suburb across America. It's estimated that there is something like 24,000 foreign adoptees who are no longer with their adopted families. And as we've seen, there are countless more waiting to be rehomed. To rehome a child here is breathtakingly easy. Parents who no longer want their kids simply sign them over to those who do. As you guys may know, there's been a huge decline in international adoption over the past couple of years. Now, we could say the reason why is because Americans don't want to adopt internationally anymore. Americans have turned over a new leaf and they want to adopt the kids from foster care. The reason why there's such a decline, well, one of the reasons why there's such a decline in international adoptions is because a lot of countries are closing their doors to Americans because their children are coming into America and then being rehomed. Their children are coming to America and they're ending up in foster care. So a lot of these countries, Ethiopia being one of them, has shut their doors to America because of the number of children that were adopted from Ethiopia and they ended up in foster care, ended up homeless, and then America, the system, had to take care of the child that these parents had originally adopted, okay? So the decline is largely due to the fact that a lot of countries don't like America's practices when it comes to adoption. I think it's often that the child doesn't meet the expectations of the family. And so instead of working with a child, they're trying to rehome them, get rid of them, dispose of them. When you adopt a child, it is forever. You should not get to the place where you need to return that child for any reason because the child is unreturnable. Just like your biological child, you can't put the child back in your womb and say just return to wherever you came from. So why do some people think that once they adopt a child, it's like an option, you can just return them. Return them to where? Especially when they're coming from a different country. And so now this has become such a prevailing practice and it's shocking, but I want, to open you guys' eyes to see when I am talking about how we need to be the best adaptive parents that we can be and how we need to understand about interracial adoption, we need to understand trauma, we need to understand that this child is coming with their own biological stuff and that we need to be prepared for that. This is what I'm talking about. And what about the people who might be looking at these photos? Who might they be? Well, it could be anyone. We know from experience it can be pedophiles and people who are liars and cheats. Like a shopping list for a pedophile. Absolutely. Absolutely. 17-year-old Poppy knows the awful truth through first-hand experience. Like an unwanted pet, Poppy's former adoptive parents rehomed her when she was just seven years old. They delivered her to Nicole and Calvin Eason, a couple they met in an adoption chat room who have since been exposed as serial pedophiles. When we are when we're going through the adoption process, you know, a lot of people complain about the home study, but there's a reason for the home study. I love that there's a home study process because we're vetting people to make sure that they're not criminals that they can actually take care of a child because we want children to be placed in safe families. The children have already been traumatized by being removed from wherever they came from. And so to add now them being placed with the family who's going to abuse and neglect them obviously causes further harm. One of the evils of this rehoming process is that there is no vetting. The family that decides to just give up their children will just give that child up to anybody. I mean, they're not going through a background check process with that other family. Like, let me see your FBI background checks. You know, did you go to the state patrol and get fingerprint? They're not doing that. They're like, oh, 
Well, you look like a nice family, sure. If you want to take this child, here you go. Or you go on Facebook, and there are people who are actually middlemen here. <laughs> and they will post your child's profile on the Facebook group and say, anybody looking? Anybody! It's a public group. Anybody can go look and decide and kind of check and see what child they want. And they don't have to go through a home study process. They don't have to go through background checks. They don't have to go through all the hard work that you have to do to be able to adopt a newborn, to be able to adopt from, they don't have to go through any of that. So this literally opens the door wide open for children to be sex trafficked, for pedophiles to taking these children, and for, these, for criminals to taking these children. If I was a family that was approached by another family and they told me, hey, you know, we've adopted this child and we don't want this child anymore, will you take them? I would call the police. <laughs> That's what I would do. That's what I would recommend that you do too, by the way. Anyway, when you think about this, what the family is actually doing is discarding the child and doing the most neglectful thing that a parent can do is leave your child with whoever. That is pure evil in my book. Now, if you are as incensed about this as I am and you're like, I cannot believe they would do this to children, they are. And children are going through this every day right here in the beautiful land of the land of the free. Church, we really need to turn our heart to these children because God loves these children. If we don't step in and we don't do something, like really do something, do our part, I'll take one child. You know, I'll foster one or I'll adapt one and you just focus on being the best adaptive parent that we can be. If we don't do something, these children are being, this is what's happening to them, right? So church, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna like just bury our heads in the sand and pretend like these things are not happening? Because they are, and now you know, so you can pretend like you didn't know. <laughs> now you have a responsibility to pray and ask God, what can I do? There, there are so many things that we can do to be involved so that we can be a positive change. If you wanna join um, a brand new community, um, which is called Kingdom Adoption Community. Um, I'm gonna put the link below. We're just gonna be hanging out and we're gonna be talking about how to be the best adaptive parent that we can be. I'm gonna be bringing topics that we really need to hear um, about adoption. And it's just gonna be a place where you can chat with each other, you can get to know each other all across America. And we can just really um, encourage each other in the Lord to do this great work that God has given the church, which is to take care of his orphans, okay? So if that's you, you're interested in joining the community, click the link below, and hopefully I'll see you in there. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.